You know, it's crazy to think that in October of 2019, I stood right here. I literally, I stood right here and I pointed across the street and I talked about, here's our power. We're gonna run transmission across the way and we're gonna go build this thing. And at the time, none of that was there. None of it, none of it. Today, we're gonna go through the whole project. We're gonna go through our shop building, our security building, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. You know, when to think, like as I said, none of this was here, none of this behind us. And so earlier this year, actually during the winter, I talked about how we started landscaping. So in the future, we planted this, and I love it. I love driving in here in the day. I can't wait until the crepe myrtles are blooming, but now we're gonna start planting across the front of the property. Why? Because plants make people happy. But as we walk up here, I've always talked about this is our security entrance. Our security entrance was designed and built by 10 employees that actually went through a job training program at, through the Texas Workforce at Temple College, and they learned new skills and actually took those skills and built this. And I think it's a great way to have the entrance to our facility by people that actually work here. They built it. And so let's go inside. So when you think of it, this building here was originally built and it had tables that were set up. And those tables were jigs that we built to build the actual shelving that went in building to A and building B. And literally it was like a mass production facility. Now we have a full mechanic shop here that actually services all of our equipment because when you have a facility this big, you need to be thinking about welders and fabricators and mechanics and things to actually keep the facility running. So I'm here next to building A. Building A is 63,000 square feet. I've talked about it in the past. It's 1,050 long, 60 wide. It stands about 24 feet high. You can hear miners in the background running. But I think what's more important is when you look here on both sides, you can see now that this project is coming to a completion. As we finish each one of these buildings, we're starting to do the finish work on the outside. And as you can see, We've installed this raised retainer wall and we started landscaping next to these buildings. Why? Because again, I always say people and plants are a good thing to go together. So after working on a literally a construction site for 27 months, this probably it will be one of my favorite new additions. As you can see here, all the way down and then all the way in the other direction, we're about to put in our first large paved road. We have all the paved roads between the buildings, but this road, this road is gonna be something because when you see concrete for good, you know we're getting close to finishing. So you see right here, Heath and Abby are taking out some visitors today and they're going actually to go through the data center and take a look at what we have going on. It's really neat. We do tours on a regular basis, but this group right here is a tour of people that are just asking to come. So once a month, Lauren Mathern and our admin office, or director of admin, I should say, schedules it and then we take them out and then show them around and we just love the interaction. All right, so we're inside of building B and boy, you can hear these miners are humming. So let's take a walk for one second and let's walk over to our evaporative cooling wall. So our evaporative cooling wall is running. You can see here, water drains from the top to the bottom and then recirculates outside and we collect it in 1,000 gallon tanks that are stored underground. We have a water loop that runs throughout the property as we have a, I believe it's a 2,000 gallon per minute pump now that operates at this facility. It provides clean water, we recirculate and also use as much water that doesn't evaporate. So it is a way to drop our internal temperature as well as um, it also works great for controlling dust. But here's the important part. Let's go inside the heat aisle. All right, so we're going inside. It's loud and it's hot, but you have to have this experience. Everybody does. So make sure, watch your head, take your feet up when we go inside. I mean, it is loud, loud, loud. So it's super simple. We actually capture the heat inside and it actually goes out of the building in here. Typically, I mean, this is probably one of the most efficient ways to move it 
as you can see, all the miners are sealed. The heat again is captured and moves out the building through the top. Now let's go look at the immersion building. So like I was saying earlier about the tours, you saw the tour bus. You can see the group right behind me is here on a tour. They're with Heath and Abby. They're gonna go in the same places we're going today. Now we're talking. So one of the parts about having your entire team with the ability to do just about anything, we recognize that our forklifts when moving pallets through here were actually hitting our walls and causing a problem. So one of our teams came up with this design, welded it here on site, and they're installing it throughout the buildings. So this is building D. I brought you in here before. You can see they're up top. They're finishing, they just got all of the louvers in on the top, and now they're gonna start closing the building in. But let's go inside for a second. So one of the other things you can see as you look all the way down here, all of our switch gear is in place, our transformers are set, and we're actually waiting for our new custom designed shelving to come in. And that shelving will sit down the center aisle, it'll go straight to the top, three wires in the top, it bolts together in four sections, and then literally goes live. As you can just see, it's all the way to the end. This building is ready, and that shelving is coming soon. And then we'll have 20-foot water walls on each side. Both building D and E are identical, and we're gonna walk right over to E because they have the framing set for the roof. So, as you can see, now our team is installing, installing transformers on building E, which is a awesome, awesome excitement for me because that means we're making even more progress, but we're gonna walk inside here. And as crazy as this sounds, the entire roof is built on the ground and then it gets picked up and bolted in place. So if you see, we have the whole roof ready. It's ready to go and get installed here on this property. And so building E, again, is just like building D, 20 foot water walls. If you look across the way on the other side, you'll see the louvers at the top, they go all the way down. That now is a little bit wider and a little bit taller than it is in building A and B. Now, this is what I've been waiting for. Because every time I see concrete poured, I know, again, I keep saying we're getting a little closer to being finished. But knowing that concrete's poured right here, I know that building F is almost complete. We just have a few sections in the very, very north side of the property. You actually can see we have a team right here digging. That team is installing some additional infrastructure, some new water lines and also some drains, and that's gonna help our efficiency in this facility. I'll probably get in trouble for being in here. I mean, that's really, I'm sure Arlen's coming for me any second now, but we're inside of a 700 megawatt substation. And now, if you look right through here, you can see all the way to the end, right? So I always talk about the, we have a 100 megawatt transformer that sits in the front, that's a spinning reserve, and then 700 more megawatts that are built into this. Each building has 100 megawatts attached to it, and then that is the efficiency. You can see our continuous bus. Also, you see one of our cranes across the way as we continue to work on this project. You know, we're right next to our PDC. Everything that runs our smart response software that actually controls our load in the event ERCOT needs power from us, actually turns our miners off and sheds that load back into the grid to help with stability. That all happens right here in this building. You guys are tricking me. You got miners right there, literally. Miners right there, this is the last section. I talked about the last section in a video like two weeks ago, but look, you're gonna turn around here in a second. You're gonna see we're inside building F. And you can see they have staged all the miners for this last section. I do know they're turning uh, a system on later today. They turned systems on yesterday and I believe the day before. And all we have literally left is this small section. I know they're waiting for some parts right here, but as soon as that section's done, look, miners are going right here. And then this is it. Jason, this is it. Jason, right here, this is it. It's about to happen. Now, let's head to building G. So 
now we're in building G, as you can see right behind me, right there, right there. The first tanks are gone in. You can see they're getting ready for the next set. We have a crew that's working on both sides. Actually, we have the time actually to paint the water lines because, you know, we want them to look pretty because that's really important. And I know that sounds silly, but that is a really important part of this facility. The landscaping, the roads, our employees and their staff and like their uniforms and everything about it, having a place that's visually pleasing, right? And every aspect is important because it truly makes people feel better about their job. And I know sometimes when I talk about those things, some people think I'm crazy, but you know what? I'll give you a perfect example. Let's look at the switch gear right here. This is a work of art, right? It's pretty, it looks good. There are people love what they do and they're proud of their work. And that is such an important component to this business. Riot believes in its people and our ability to execute at speed and scale. And having that type of workmanship is pinnacle in our ability to execute every single day. You have to imagine when, when we were working in building F, we did, the supplies were coming as we were building. And as we we're walking through here and there's PDUs waiting for installation and all of our water lines are here. We have our switch gear installed. They're pulling wire. All these things, because we're building at such a fast pace, that didn't exist in building up because as fast as we were putting the building up, we were trying to get miners on. So this building is gonna go so much faster. I mean, the network room is here. The network room, right? I know that sounds crazy, but when we deployed, Initially, we, the network room wasn't finished. We literally were installing miners and turning them on as fast as we were building, mean, meaning crews were building, literally they were pouring concrete on the other end of the building. And that is one of the things that makes having, owning your own infrastructure, owning your own infrastructure company, and having dedicated personnel that just works on building and putting miners online is critical in Riot's ability to execute and expand. When you move half a million cubic feet of dirt, you end up at some point with a wall. And so what we did is we've cut layers because this is our new outdoor amphitheater where we're gonna hold epic concerts. No, actually, we're gonna put retaining walls in and plant native plants across the top with flowering trees so that we can start putting back the nature and having both sides of the property look finished. And it, it is funny that I stand out here and you look up here, now you realize how much dirt we removed. I mean, if you look, those are all the shelves going all the way up. But I like the idea of the epic outdoor festival parties, much better than retaining walls and plants. This is Chad Harris with Riot's Winsome Data Center in Rockdale, Texas, and thank you for watching.